I've used some of the coolest MIDI plugins in the world. And there's one that I keep coming back to. I'm gonna show you three ways to use it. What you're gonna learn is an example of how all these producers are coming up with all these crazy ideas just out of thin air, or so they say. What we're using today is called Core Jam. And the first thing I wanna show you is chord presets. So I have a little sound that I picked out from Analog Lab, and let's just load up one of these presets that come in the factory sounds of Core Jam to play. Cool, so this is the progression that is giving me right here. That's the complete idea. That is the complete idea. And if I wanted to, I could just get started with something from there. Let's check out another preset. All right, cool. We got some options there. And then there's some other factory presets we could check out. If we just scroll down, we can go through some more. We've got some hip hop presets. And then I also made some presets as well. This pack is called Smoke and Mirrors. So let's check out one of these presets. And within this, I actually have the second tip that I want to go over, which is using the ARP function in this plugin, Core Jam. So I have a couple different things happening here. And you can click on each individual note or chord within the plugin down here in this area. So I have alternated between chords and arps and this one is an arp and then this one is an arp. So we get like a cool melody effect going on at the same time. Now it's nothing for me to just take this MIDI out. I can either record it to the track or I can drag and drop it onto wherever I wanna put it. Cool, got a nice preset here. Now with that, I have instant inspiration. I could easily flip it into something like this. Ignore the mix. Tip one was using presets. Tip two was using arpeggios. And then the third one is to build your own. So you can use this to build out your own patterns. Let's go up to an initial patch and let me show you how you might wanna start. So to get started, you wanna set your scale. I'm gonna use D minor, scale type minor. Now, when I play the keys on my piano, I'm playing one note at a time and it's playing the chord for me. Now, another thing you could do to add a layer to this is change the chord type. So, I can click on minor major seven and now, it'll play seven chords instead of the basic triads it was playing before. Cool, now to take it a step further, let's say you wanna create something in the sequencer. No problem, what we can do, click on the note you want, on the chord you want, and draw it in. Mind you, you can also do this in the sequencer of your choice and whatever DAW you're using. You're not limited to what is here but it is an option. And when you're done, you can drag out the MIDI with one of these over here. When we're creating this chord, we have a few different options. So obviously just playing the chord itself is, is pretty cool, but we can also change the voicings. So I can drop down the first voice an octave, negative 12 semitones, and we could bring up the top note, the seventh, which is the fourth voice of the chord an octave, give it a nice little ding at the top, which is pretty cool. We can also randomize these options using the dice icons. I'm gonna randomize the velocity in these notes. Cool, now we can also randomize when they're played. So if we want, we can strum these notes. So let's hear what this sounds like. It's really exaggerated. could be pretty cool you might want to keep that in addition to changing the timing of the notes you can also just go into art mode 
as we discussed previously. I'm going to stick with time for this purpose, but there are a few different options with those ARPs if you decide to go with that direction. So let's figure out a nice progression here, and we'll go ahead and use this since we are inside of the interface. Now for the second chord, I would like to change the inversion. So I'm going to go here. Let's see what it sounds like. And let's make sure this is on time. Cool. And let's bring this down. I'm gonna fast forward through the rest of this just because it was a process and y'all deserve to see the end. Cool, and I'm actually gonna keep it at 32 steps. Now, if we wanna drag this to the sequencer, I can just grab something like FL keys real quick for the demonstration and boom, drop it on there. And we have our chords right there in the sequencer. And this works in any DAW that you are using. If you don't have access to using the MIDI inputs and outputs, you can at least drag and drop it and keep everything simple. If you really need another reason why you should give this thing a chance, check out this video.